I've been a Mac user since 2006, and today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite tips and tricks for staying productive or for just speeding up your workflow that I've picked up over the years. Anyway, let's not waste any time. Hit subscribe if you like aesthetic tech content, and let's get right into it. My first tip for anyone using a MacBook is not to sleep on the trackpad gesture controls. These can be really powerful if you get used to them and it will speed up your workflow massively. Let's go over a few of my favorites. First up is one which reveals the desktop. This is great if you have a face full of apps and just need to get everything out of the way. To do this, hold four fingers on your trackpad and expand outwards. This will push everything away so you can access your desktop nice and easily. To bring it back, just do the reverse and pinch inwards with four fingers and it will all come flooding back. Secondly, a three finger swipe to the left or right will allow you to move between multiple desktops if you have that set up. And thirdly, a three finger swipe upwards will launch Mission Control so you can have an overview of all of your app windows. You can customize these in system preferences if you like, but this default setup has been working really nicely for me. Next up is something I do on every single Mac within the first half hour of opening it and getting it set up. It's making use of something in system preferences called hot corners. Hot corners are a way of getting your Mac to do something when you drag your mouse to the corner of the screen. For example, you can open up mission control, lock your screen, launch a quick note, and so much more. Personally, I only have one corner set up and it's the bottom right, which launches mission control so I can get to all of my other windows nice and easily. I tend to find my screen so full of apps while I'm working on design or photography work that just having that there can keep me from getting too confused with where everything is. I actually use this so much that when I go back to my PC, I often find myself dragging the mouse to the bottom right to try and access all my windows and it just doesn't work. So it's really hardwired itself into me. Okay, next up is another thing I do almost immediately on my Mac when I get it set up, is to set a double click on the top of an application window to minimize rather than zoom in. Some of you might already know about this one, but double clicking the top of an application window will cause it to zoom in by default, and I find that kind of useless. However, in system preferences, you can change that to a minimize, which is way more useful in my opinion. Following on from that is something that I find really annoying that's set by default on Macs too, and I always end up changing it. When you download something from the internet, your Mac will try and open any safe file immediately. For example, if you download an image, your Mac will just open it for you straight away after it's downloaded. And that's fine if you like that, but I really don't, especially if you're downloading a bunch of music for a video project, and then it all opens up at once and it just turns into a real mess. I should have stopped this from happening years ago, and I really lived with it for a long time. So let me save you the pain that I went through. To sort this, just head over to Safari or Chrome's preferences and tick the open save files after downloading box, and it will save you the headache. Let's talk about an app quickly for this next one. As a dual user of Windows and Mac, I'm still stuck in both worlds, and if there's something I think the PC still really excels at, it's window management in terms of snapping things side by side. Mac OS does have a version of this, but honestly, it's annoying to get it to work how I want it to, and worst of all, I just find it really slow. But enter Magnet. Magnet basically makes the window management in macOS do its best Windows impression and allows you to snap windows to any area of the desktop you want. You can even customize how it works too, but for me the default settings are fine. This is a paid app and I think there's some free versions of this style of app out there if you Google it hard enough. I believe there's one called Rectangle, but I've been a big fan of Magnet since I picked it up and I really do think it's worth the asking price for sure, especially if you're dueling Windows and Mac like I am. Okay, moving on to the next one. And this is one of the bigger productivity boosters for Mac in my opinion it's having multiple desktops on the go. If you launch into Mission Control and look towards the top of the screen, you'll see you have access to making more desktop instances in which you can open up a completely different set of apps and windows. This is especially useful if you're used to working on an external monitor, full screening an app, or if you just want different environments for different pieces of work. I tend to do this the most when I'm working in Photoshop or InDesign, so I have access to the entire screen for that application, while I have the brief or the internet opened in another desktop space. You can also use the three finger gesture, which we touched on earlier to quickly switch between them, which speeds up the entire workflow of it. Like many devices and programs out there, keyboard shortcuts can always speed up what you do, but they're usually very personal or differ from app to app, so these are some more standard ones that I use day to day, which are really, really helpful. 
My favorite out of these is probably Command and W. This shuts a current window and not an actual application. So if you're in Finder and you've got a bunch of windows open, for example, you can quickly close them by tapping Command W. Or if you're browsing the web and want to close your current tab but keep the internet itself open, you can just tap this to do that. This works in most apps and I find it a good alternative to Command Q, which outright closes an application you're working in. Another one I use a lot as a Premiere Pro user is Force Quit. This acts like Control Alt Delete on Windows, but it's the Mac version. Pressing Command, Option and Escape will launch you into Force Quit and you can then select any open app and force it to close. Useful if your Mac chokes up or just gets stuck. And you can even relaunch Finder from here too if that decides it doesn't want to work properly or if AirDrop is having one of its many moments. Quick View is another one I love. This one is super simple. If you highlight any file and hit the spacebar, macOS will show you a preview of what that file is. So if it's a video or audio, it will play. Or if it's an image or a PDF, you'll see what it looks like when it's opened. And finally, hitting Command and Spacebar will bring up Spotlight, which if you don't use much, is a hugely powerful search menu within macOS. Seriously, you can find anything in here just by typing in a few keywords, whether that's files, web pages, applications, or even just searching the web. If you've got an iPhone or an iPad, then this next tip really is for you. And I've touched on this in previous videos, but it's certainly worth mentioning again. It's using handoff between your devices for greater continuity. Handoff can do loads of little things, but I wanted to specifically talk about copy and pasting information between devices because it's so, so useful. If you're on your iPhone or iPad and you want to copy over some text or an image file, you can simply tap copy on there then move to your Mac and paste it, and it automatically brings over whatever you copied. This is so useful if you want to quickly copy some text from a text message, or if you want to insert an image into something you're working on. It also works the other way around too, so you can bring things from your Mac to your iPhone or iPad, and I really love it. Assuming you own both devices, this should already be working, but if not, make sure your phone and computer are on the same Wi-Fi, you're logged into the same Apple account on both, and you need to have it enabled in system preferences too. Another thing I use all the time that's built directly into macOS is using Preview to edit PDFs. I tend to dive through a lot of PDFs throughout my freelance work, and sometimes this really is a lifesaver. It also means you don't need to download a separate PDF editor, of which there seems to just be millions. Preview can add text, markup, add signatures, and most importantly to me, move actual pages in a PDF around so you don't have to re-export that PDF if you get some pages mixed up. It's crazy useful, and I'm also a little ashamed to admit how much I use it for that. The Preview app as a whole is actually pretty powerful for how simple it seems to be on the surface. You can even edit photos to some degree in here and resize things too. It's a really useful little tool. Okay, this next one is one I don't use because I'm really pedantic over my desktop, but I used to mention it to my students all the time when I was a teacher, so I'm going to mention it here too. It's making use of stacks if you have a really messy desktop. It's a super simple tip, this one, but if you've got loads of stuff on your desktop and you want to clear it up, if you just right click anywhere on the desktop and click use stacks, your Mac will snap all of your files into order, collecting them by type of file. So if you've got loads of music, it will put those into a single stack, or if you've got loads of PDFs or video files, it will turn those into their own stacks too. You can then click each stack to open it back up. Like I say, I don't use this one that much because I run a tight desktop, but if you don't, it's worth checking this one out. And finally, you know I like a bonus tip, so let's throw one in here before we finish up this video. And I'm really sorry, but this is just for us Touch Bar users, and it's a really simple little app called Park. Park allows you to customize your Touch Bar and add widgets to it, so you can use it how you actually want to. I really like having the application dock in here so I can just tap one and launch an app. And there's a now playing widget which shows off your current song or YouTube video you have playing. And there really is loads of options on here so you can dig in and have a look around and it's free too. So go and check it out if you're still like me on the Touch Bar MacBooks. So that just about rounds up all the little tips and tricks I've been using on the Mac over the years. If you've got a cool tip or trick that you'd like to share, then make sure you pop it in the comments below. I'm always up for learning new ones and I'm sure all of you watching are too. If you could pop a like for Pocky being in and out and in and out of the office while I've been recording this video, that'd be great. And I'll see you all in the next one.